process of hiring and training those folks. And uh, if if we can keep officers uh, happy and excited to work here and, and we stay fully staffed, we'll get those uh, cut loose as, as fast as possible. We'll start the school year off with uh, partial um, patrol staffing for those 11 positions. Uh, and then hopefully by December, I think we'll be pretty close to that 11. Outstanding, thank you very much for that update. Mrs. James. Uh, thank you, Mr. Redeem. My question is not for Chief Ryder, so he can go back, I think, sit down. Um, thank you, though, for sharing all that exciting safety information because it's, uh, it's important for our students and our parents to feel that their kids are safe when they come to school. So just thank you for your commitment to that and the team that you lead to help, help lead that. So thank you. Uh, my question is uh, about the um, the box that I didn't hear anybody speak about that's in the middle of that uh, screen right there that says New School Boundary Oversight Committee. Beth is actually planning that once we get through this round of questions. Oh, okay. I, I thank Good, because I was like, okay, I know the community is going to ask about that, so I, I want to be sure somebody's mentioned that. So. Are we all good? All right. Beth? So last but not least, um, based on the board's work and the policy committee's work on approving policy FC local, which guides our attendance planning process in the district, we're able to make improvements in that planning process and the way in which we engage with the community at a deeper level. And we'll be partnering with the community to establish a school boundary oversight committee, which will allow for more engagement and input and oversight to the board um, based on direction and policy. We're excited that we opened up the opportunity for applicants to, to submit their interest last week on Wednesday. And that application process will run through the 25th of August. As of this afternoon, we had just over 120 applicants already in the queue. And so we look forward to receiving more. Uh, the membership on the SBOC will consist of three parents for each feeder pattern and one community member for each feeder pattern, giving preference to the community members who may have participated in the Board Leadership Academy. Um, we will be looking for representation across the district at each level, elementary, middle, and high school within those feeder patterns. And we just look forward to this deeper level of collaboration with the community in this process, which will um, ask members to serve a two-year overlapping term. In the inaugural year, we'll cast lots or draw um, numbers so that we'll have staggered membership with the first cohort having a one-year term and, and then a two-year term kind of split down the middle, and we'll, we'll cast those lots within the feeder pattern so we'll have um, equitable representation that will be on for two years and that way we carry that history throughout instead of losing the knowledge along the way. Thank you Mrs. Martinez. Uh, thank you Ms. Martinez. I just I, I want to comment on that because I think what I heard you say is I appreciate that this is coming from the policy that we recently uh, the board recently approved and this is kind of a new way of looking at um, the board basically getting, um, having an advisory committee or having some help in getting some feedback from the community around, um, around the new boundaries uh, or any new boundaries that would be suggested. So there's been a couple of rumors in the community about uh, watch out, they're just trying to you know, pull a fast one uh, or there's a secret agenda to all of this. Uh, I don't feel that there's any kind of secret agenda or surprise gotcha coming um, because we've been really transparent, but I just want to make sure from your perspective if there's any, uh, any surprises that the community might want to know about. Thank you. That's good feedback to know. Um, I think there are two things that come to mind as you mentioned that that really will show that this is an oversight to the board committee, similar to the bond oversight committee, and that is that our first meeting, when we begin meeting in September, is to go over the student enrollment review information and provide updates to the facilities master plan along with what staff you know, recommends that we move forward in terms of boundaries or student attendance areas, and then the oversight committee will study all of that information and provide input and oversight in that process, bringing recommendations to the board 
board and to the community for further feedback and staff's role in that would be to take the feedback from the community and organize it in a way that the oversight committee can um, study further and then ultimately make recommendations to the board should an attendance boundary be a recommendation January of the year prior to implementation. Okay. Beth, the other thing I would add, Mrs. James, is that the procedures for all of this, is a, it's a very thick volume that Beth and her team have done a remarkable job of developing, very detailed, very comprehensive. Um, those We approved those as an E-team this morning. They're going to be provided to the board and posted publicly for the community to also have access to on the district website. So they'll be very transparent. The procedures will be there. And so in, they'll be able to follow along as we go through the, the process. I would also point out one of the key elements is that the committee itself will have elected officers that they elect and appoint amongst themselves that will serve as the voice to the board. So what we're, what kind of what we're taking out of the process is the black box where a committee recommends to the administration and then it comes to the board. The committee officers will stand with the administration as the board considers the various scenarios. Thank you. Um, so the only follow-up question to that is that I just want to make sure it's clear. These officers of this committee, the, their role is only to do the recommendation, not necessarily any other powers to be. I think, I want, you know, I just want to make sure when this committee is developed and chosen that we clearly understand from the public as well as what that role is. Um, so that there is no confusion of, you know, what they're to do when it comes to whether it be president or chair or whatnot when it comes to working with the board. Exactly. Okay. No, that's one thing, uh, main learnings we have gleaned from the last few years is clearly defining the role um, the, of the committee itself, but also the various t and the entitled roles and what that would mean. So that, that should be very clearly defined. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Dupree, is that it? That's it. All right. We will now convene in closed session under the Texas Open Meetings Act, Chapter 551, and those mm -hmm. sections listed in the agenda for the purpose or private consultation with the board's attorney on any or all subject matters authorized by law. We are now convening closed session.